right, Northside learners. Y'all ready for day three? Let's get this going. Um, again, just a reminder that same morning worksheet that we started on day one is the same one we're going to be using for both today and tomorrow. Um, you probably have noticed by now there's no Friday morning work, and we'll get to that when we get to day five. But yes, you're right. We don't have morning work on Fridays. Um, so looking at our morning work here, let me get my hand ready. Um, continuing with the um, passage, Life in the Midwest, we see on Wednesday, prairie land is all around Brandy's farm. The prairie is a large open space of land. It's very flat and grassy. Many kinds of animals live on the prairie, such as prairie dogs, coyotes, buffalo, and wild mustangs. Number one's asking us to write three words that would describe this prairie. Um, so if we go back in our story, um, we see that the prairie is a large open space of land. This sentence is describing it as very flat and grassy. A lot of animals live there. So um, a I'm going to list more than three. Um, and some that stand out to me, it would be large, open, flat, and grassy. So those are a few adjectives or describing words you could choose from to describe the prairie here. Okay, number two is asking us to circle the word that has almost the same meaning as soaked. So it said Taylor's shirt was soaked after the rain started. So we know when the rain comes down, we can infer that rain is water, water makes our shirts get wet. So um, her shirt wouldn't necessarily be white because it's soaked and it definitely wouldn't be dry. So wet is our best answer choice there. Then number three is asking us why we think Brandy, who is the main character in our story for this week, might choose to learn more about wild mustangs. I think you could have put anything on this line along the lines of because it's one of the animals that live there, because we see wild mustangs on here. She's new to this state of Alaska, oh, no, Alaska, Nebraska. Um, she doesn't know a lot about them. Maybe she wants to learn more about them because they're animals that live where she lives now. Anything along those lines is perfect. And then number four is asking to read the sentence and underline, figure out what those underlined words heroes mean. The firemen who saved the family are heroes. So when we think about heroes, um, superheroes come to my mind, um, military heroes, um, medical heroes, people that are admired and looked up to, someone who you think is your hero um, would mean C, people who are looked up to. The other A and B choices. The shout and work done for money don't really make sense here. Okay, so just flip that paper over and let's look at the math side. It says Miranda has 11 inches of border for the bulletin board. I'm going to circle the number 11 because I bet that's going to be important. She needs 27 inches. How much more border does Miranda need to finish the bulletin board? Now, with my class, we kind of have a little chant that we say for how many more, how much more, words like that. We say how many more, subtraction, and that's the same thing as how much more. So how much more signals we need to subtraction. So I'm gonna write, Sub right there, so I'll remember I need to subtract. And then another song we use is subtraction is not the worst, the bigger number always comes first. And the two numbers they gave us in this problem were 27 and 11. So we know that when we subtract, we have to put the bigger number on top, which is 27. So I'm going to stack 27 on top of 11. And subtract away. Now 7 is bigger than 1, so I can subtract straight down. 7 minus 1 gives me 6, and then 2 minus 1 gives me 1. So my answer is 16. And of course, you could check the subtraction by adding those two smaller numbers together. 16 plus 11, and that would give us 27. Okay, this next one is asking us to circle the box that has an odd number of tallies. Now when I think of odd, Remember, odd means I cannot break it into two equal groups like I can even numbers. So this first box here, we count 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm going to write that there. 
Then here we count 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then we count 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I've got to choose between 14, 13, and 18. Now I know that there are doubles addition facts that add up to equal 14 and 18. 7 plus 7 equals 14. So that's an even number because I can divide it into two equal groups. Um, for this one, 18, I know 9 plus 9 equals 18, meaning it's even because I can divide it into two equal groups. So that's not it either. So the only number here that has an odd number of tallies is going to be the box with 13. Okay? Next here, you've got to draw an array for this equation, 5 plus 5 plus 5 equals 15. So an, an array, remember, is a picture that we draw with equal rows that go from side to side and columns that go up and down. So we could do three rows of five. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Or we could flip this and do three columns of five, which would just be the same thing, just drawing it as columns, three columns up and down as five. So a couple ways you could answer that one, as long as you have equal rows and equal columns, and it equals up to, adds up to 15 with three sets of five somewhere, you're good to go. All right, last one, word problem here. So let's get those pencils ready to take some notes. It says, Edgar washes 26 shirts. He needs to fold 18 shirts. How many shirts does Edgar, keyword, not need to fold? So I know you remember number bonds from a way long time ago with math, where we basically practice a number bond would be part plus part equals whole. So right now, we know that our whole number, or the total number of shirts we have is 26. Um, he folds, or needs to fold, our first part, 18, and I'm trying to solve for this missing part here. So um, really two main ways we could solve this one. It depends on if you're more comfortable with addition rather than subtraction. Personally, I'm going to subtract for this one, but I'm going to explain both ways um, in case you did it either way or in case you're stuck on this one. Um, the addition way you could solve this would be to start at the number 18 and add on, count on, until you get to 26. So start at 18, count on to 26, and however many it takes you to get there, that's your answer. Um, the way that my brain is the most comfortable with working is taking that whole number of shirts, 26, and subtracting the 18 that he had to fold to find out how much are left. So I know I cannot solve 6 minus 8 like we practiced yesterday. If I only have 6, I can't give you 8. So I've got to go next door and get 10 more. My 2 becomes a 1. My 6 becomes a 16. And I know 16 minus 8 is 8. And 1 minus 1 is 0. So my answer is 8. And I can fit that in this number bond here. And I can add up 18 plus 8 to get 26 which is my whole number I started with. All right, I'm sure you did amazing on that. And while I'm erasing that, you can go ahead and take out your um, daily quick write writing assignment that was given to you for today. Um, it sounded like a really fun one too. So we'll pull that up in just a second. Okay, so this is the prompt that you were given on your daily quick write. Um, where you were supposed to write um, several sentences responding to the prompt of, if you were a leprechaun for a day, what would you do? Um, I love the format of these because it's always a super fun and engaging prompt, and then it gives you excellent things to check over here on the side. So you want to try to shoot for um, at least five sentences, which would be your topic sentence, Detail one, two, and three, and then your closing sentence. And remember, our topic sentence is going to be the sentence that introduces 
you're writing to your audience, you really wanna grab their attention and get them excited um, about this. So maybe a topic sentence could be, if I were a leprechaun for, the, for a day, I would travel around Ireland and visit all my other leprechaun friends. And that's gonna get your reader's attention and then details one, two, and three are gonna explain the things you're gonna do that matches your topic. And then the closing sentence basically just restates your topic sentence. Um, that's what I would do if I was leprechaun for a day. Sure sounds like a fun adventure. Something like that to wrap it up for your reader that restates what you introduced with your topic sentence. You definitely wanna make sure you double check all these things as well, that you start with a capital letter, have correct end punctuation. Word choice means that we're writing with really good second grade, maybe even third grade vocabulary by now. We don't wanna use our little Clinton Park words anymore. Um, spelling, best you can, um, within reason of course. And then that it makes sense. You wanna make sure you have complete sentences that make sense. Um, and then after you are finished with that today, you have um, Study Island ELA Day 3. Remember, that'll be down in your active assignments. If you're having any technical difficulties with iPads or Study Island not working, make sure you let your teacher know so she can navigate you through that. All right, let's go ahead and transition now to math. We're sticking with um, measurement here. So real quick, let's check your adding by twos at the top of your page. Of course, we've got 10, 26, and 44, 14, 18, 68, and then 20, 24, and 48. Um, now, the way I was able to format this on here, this is actually the very last problem on your page, so we're going to jump to that and then go back up to the um, appropriate measuring tool for those items. So, reading carefully, it says the height of a penguin is 42 inches. And the height, and remember height is a fancy word for how tall something is. The height of a cat is 18 inches. And our question is, how much taller, does that sound familiar from morning work, how many more, how much taller is a penguin than the cat? And it's asking us to write an equation here. So. Um, we remember how much more, how many more, how much taller always means that we're going to subtract, or that's at least the way that I teach it. So, and remember, like we said earlier, subtraction, it's not the worst, the bigger number always comes first. And he only gave me two numbers to choose from, and obviously 42 is bigger. So 42 minus 18, and we're gonna solve this. So um, start with my ones, and remember I've taught you that this week, always, always, always start with my ones. So you do four minus one first, you're gonna mess up. So start with my ones, and I've got two minus eight. Now, if I have two markers, I cannot let you use eight. It's not enough, the bigger number's on the floor, so I gotta go next door. My four is gonna become a three, making my two a 12. And 12 minus eight is four, and three minus one is two, 24. Um, and a way we can check this would be to add these two numbers, 18 plus 24, eight plus four is 12, one plus one plus two is four, which gives us 42, the number we started with. So for equation right here, we're gonna write 42 minus 18, so the cat length minus, sorry, the penguin length minus the cat equals 24. All right. So last thing on this math sheet for today is asking you to choose the appropriate measuring tool to measure different items. Now, chances are you don't have a ruler and a yardstick at your house. And that's okay, I don't have a ruler and a yardstick in my house either. But if you do, awesome. Use that for visuals. But right now, I kinda wanna paint a little picture for you. So, a couple of benchmark items you can use at home to help you remember what these different measurements are. For an inch, I want you to think of a small, regular size paper clip, or, I think I showed you this the other day, that small bend in your thumb right there. 
It's about one inch. Then for a foot, you can kind of think about this part of your forearm right here, or even really like my foot would be about a foot. So I use this to remember an inch, and I use this to remember about what a foot is. And then a yard, think of a yardstick. Um, two ways to remember what kind of a yard is would be the width of your classroom door. So the bottom of your classroom door or about how tall your classroom's iPad cart is. So the smallest unit we're working with today is gonna to be inches, then feet, and then yards is gonna be the biggest one. So let's think about these different items um, and what would be appropriate to measure them. Now, of course, I could use inches, feet, and yards to measure the height of a doorway, but let's think what makes the most sense. So the height of a doorway, remember I said height is how tall something is. It's gonna take me a really long time to measure a tall door using inches or a regular ruler, which is one foot. So on this one, in my opinion, the most appropriate tool would be a yardstick because the height of a door is pretty tall. Now for a length of a pencil, I think that feet and yards are gonna be too long and that inches is gonna be best because smaller item, we wanna use the smaller unit. For the height of a flagpole, that's really, really tall. And it's gonna take me forever to use just inches or just feet. So I'm thinking on this one, we want our biggest unit, which is gonna be yards. And then the length of a car, think about your parents' car or truck or van that they have. Again, that's a pretty big item. So I think we wanna use the bigger unit here for that one. Um, but then a paper clip. Remember, I just told you a paper clip is really similar to a inch. So we want to only use inches for that. And then the length of your arm, we said that that was a foot. So we'll use feet to measure that. All right. Um, this lesson here that we just did was module seven, lesson 16. So the next step for you to do today is to get on Zern to unlock Lesson 17, meaning you will complete Lesson 16's work in order to unlock Module Lesson 17, which we will start tomorrow, okay? Any questions about that, technical difficulties, logins, Zern.org, let your teacher know if you need help. And then your last thing for the day is gonna be hopping on Study Island again under your active assignments to complete Math Day 3. Okay, hope you guys are doing great and having a good week so far. Um, keep working hard, keep reading every day, and we'll see you tomorrow.